Close your eyes, watch your breath. And try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Any you know, other thoughts come into the mind, you don't have to lay claim to them. You don't have to get involved with them. Make sure that this is the one thought that you engage in. We live both with our old actions and our new actions. The results of old actions come into the mind. They just pop into the mind, it seems to be out of nowhere. And our new actions right now are whether you are going to involved in those other thoughts or not. You decide, no, you want to stay here with the breath. You want to build up some concentration, build up some mindfulness in the mind. So for the other thoughts, you don't have to get involved. That's a large part of discernment right there, is realizing which thoughts you want to run with and which ones you don't. And you have to realize you don't have to run with everything that comes into the mind. Discernment is one of the perfections that the Buddha developed. And it starts with simple things like this, realizing that a thought comes up. And if you don't play with it, it's going to go away. It may come back again, but you just refuse to play with it, and it'll go away and go away, and finally it'll get tired of coming. Our problem is that we give in to everything that comes up into the mind. The Buddha depicts the different aspects of the practice as parts of a fortress at the edge of a frontier. You've got enemies all around you've got to be careful about. It. And the fortress, if, it has, if it's well designed, it has a good strong wall, and the wall is covered with plaster. The reason it's covered with plaster is that it means the enemy has no place to get a toehold or a foothold, no way to climb up the wall. The wall is too slippery. So ideally our mind should be like that. You would have a mind that greed finds slippery and anger finds slippery or delusion finds slippery. The problem is that for most of us we don't have much plaster on our walls, so these things can climb up our walls very easily and get inside. And on top of that, sometimes we give them ladders, invite them in. In other words, we think that they're our friends. You have to realize that your discernment is not really strong enough, if, you, if that's your attitude, because they come in and they make you do things that you later regret. And when the results come, they run away. They're not there to help you. So if you really have good concern for yourself, you try to develop the discernment that doesn't give in to these things. As the, in that image of the fortress, the wall is supported by a very strong foundation post. And the foundation post, the Buddha says, is conviction. And you have to ask yourself, who's got your conviction? Does greed have your conviction? In other words, you see that greed is really strong and you just have to give in every time it comes. Anger is really strong, you have to give in. That's called having conviction in greed and anger and delusion. Having conviction in your defilements. You want to have conviction in the Buddha, because he's a lot more concerned about you. He's concerned that you might do things that you're later going to regret. So make sure your foundation post is strong. You see that there's a lot of suffering that comes from giving into these things. And have trust in the Buddha when he says that you can overcome them. They're not insurmountable. They're not too powerful for you. Then you develop the discernment that learns to recognize which thoughts that come along are thoughts that you want to go with. The Buddha warns you there's some things you like, but are going to give long-term misery, long-term pain. Other things you don't like to do, but will actually give you long-term happiness. You have to take the long term into account. When you keep the long term in mind, that's called putting a good solid layer of plaster on your wall. Make sure that it's nice and smooth. When greed comes, it slides right down. Anger comes, slides right down. Delusion comes, slides right down. Falls into the moat and drowns. These things drown, these things die, it doesn't matter. That kind of killing, the Buddha said, he actually encouraged. So let these things drown. Let these things slide away. Don't give in to them and don't think they're your friends. And that way you develop your discernment. As the Buddha said, the very beginning of discernment is recognizing who's a true friend and who's not. And that applies both outside and inside. So make sure you have the good foundation in discernment, and then the more advanced kinds of discernment will follow. And this is how your discernment gets perfected.